Okay, and we are live. Hello, hello, good people. Welcome to the Daily Digital Design Show. Uh, today is January 3rd, so it's the third episode. Um, and today I want to talk about NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Everybody has heard of it so far. They came out really, really crazy when cryptocurrency really got big. Uh, but I think there's a lot of misnomer. Uh, exactly what is a NFT? How does it work? How can you go about getting some? So if you're interested in learning more about NFT, stay tuned and we'll jump right into it. everyone welcome back so today's episode it's really just gonna be all about NFTs um, like I said there is a big craze that's going on about what they are and how can you invest in them um, in my opinion so actually let's first start off with the actual definition of, of what an NFT is so an NFT again stands for non-fungible token um, two parts of that non-fungible being the first part uh, just meaning that it cannot be broken down into smaller pieces take for example uh, Bitcoin. You can have a whole Bitcoin or you can have parts and bits and pieces of a Bitcoin. So uh, you can, if it was fungible, then you can actually take it <clears throat> and, uh, and and break it down into smaller pieces uh, so that you have more of it or that it can be distributed across, you know, many platforms to other people. Uh, Non-fungible would actually be the opposite. Non-fungible would be you taking something that cannot be broken down. So say, for example, uh, a piece of artwork. I'm going to be talking about artwork a lot here today. Uh, just because with the NFTs that's been formed uh, mainly around artwork. So I think it'll be a um, great way to bring everything all together. Uh, so if you think about artwork, think about the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa, there's only one of them. It cannot be broken down at all. <laughs> you break it down, it's pretty much worthless at that point. Um, so the Mona Lisa is non-fungible. It's only one actual Mona Lisa that is out there. Um, so that's the first part of, the, of it. The second part is the token part. So non-fungible token. Uh, a token is basically, it's kind of like a cryptocurrency. Uh, if you understand cryptocurrency, then you'll probably get this one. If not, then I'll be doing another video on cryptocurrency as well. Uh, but with the tokens, it's a form of crypto um, that is used for representing an asset, um, representing an asset or uh, some specific use on its own actual blockchain. So take for example, there is a investment purpose for that token. Um, it could be a token that's used to store some sort of value in it. Um, say for example, maybe like gold. Gold is really just a, a, a place to store some value. Um, or it could be used to actually make some purchases. So if you don't use the actual cryptocurrency, uh, you can use a token to make purchases as well. So there's different aspects of what an NFT um, or what a token I should say could be used for um, those are just a couple of them but so when we get into the non-fungible tokens uh, again a lot of people think that it's just artwork a lot of people think that there's just bored apes sitting around throwing up rainbows or something like that or they think they are crypto punks that are you know just sitting there in a, in a virtual wallet or whatever um, that is not what an NFT is all of these digital art pieces are just that, just pieces of digital art that people are actually collecting and calling them NFTs, but they are not what NFTs are. So the best way I can say it is that uh, majority of the digital art pieces are NFTs, but NFTs aren't just digital art pieces. Um, so what an NFT is, is that it is a digital certificate of authentication, meaning that once you place the NFT on some sort of digital asset, you can authenticate it. You can say, hey, I actually own this. Uh, think of Louis Vuitton purses, Louis Vuitton bags. Think of Rolex watches. All of those have to be authenticated to say that they are real and that the owner actually does own it. Uh, if you go out and buy a Louis Vuitton bag from the corner store, that's not a real Louis Vuitton bag. You don't get that certificate of authentication. You don't get that proof of seal from Louis Vuitton themselves saying that, hey, this is an actual real live Louis Vuitton. Um, you don't get that same type of ownership. Yeah, you do own it, but there's no way of proving that. There's no way of going about saying that I am the owner of this. So what the NFT does is take those digital assets that we have that have been using for 
days and days and years and years and giving it away to say, hey, I actually do own this. Um, and that's where the big push is coming from is that a lot of these digital artists, a lot of these, you know, real artists and stuff like that, <clears throat> once they make a piece of art and they sell it, it's just gone. You know, they they put their name on it or they sign it at the bottom or whatever. Um, but nobody else comes back and says 50 years from now, they sell it. They say, hey, this person created this, this person did this, that, and the third. And there's also no way of that artist reaping more benefits from it after they've sold it. But with the NFTs, you can actually put in the smart contract, which we'll go over a smart contract here in a second. Uh, you can actually put in a smart contract saying that, hey, once this NFT gets sold, I get a royalty off of it. I get a percentage off of each sale that happens, no matter if it's 10 years from now, 50 years from now, or 100 years from now, I will always get paid off of this piece of artwork. Um, so if I did an artwork for, let's say Coca-Cola, and Coca-Cola takes it and they put it out there, I'll get a royalty of it. Uh, somebody buys it from Coca-Cola because it's now an NFT, I'll get a royalty off of that as well. Coca-Cola will get a royalty off of that. And if they sell it after that, and you know, it keeps on just traveling down the road like, uh, like that. Uh, it all really just depends on what you put in that contract. So to re quickly recap, NFT is just a certificate, a certificate of authentication in which you say that you own a digital asset and that digital asset is real. It's the actual one. So uh, there's this thing going around now about why can't you just create a JPEG or a PNG off of a NFT or off of a digital art, I should say. Um, why can't you just do a right click and save on that digital art? Well, it's because, well, you can't. <laughs> there's nothing stopping you from right clicking, saving it. Uh, there's nothing stopping you from turning it into a JPEG image or whatever, but it'll be a knockoff and everyone would know it's a knockoff. Why? Because you don't own that NFT for it. You don't own that certificate inside of your digital wallet, your crypto wallet that says, hey, I am the owner of the actual real one. And I also hold the, um, uh, hold the NFT for it. So if I can download a picture of the Mona Lisa right now on my computer. Do I own the real Mona Lisa? No, but I have a JPEG of it. Is it the same thing? Not necessarily. So yes, you do own an image of it, so you can print it out if you want to, put it up in your house, on your wall or whatever, but anybody comes to your house, they will know that is not the real Mona Lisa. That is the real thing with these NFTs, is just knowing that you are the true owner, you are the one and only owner of said NFT uh, or of said digital artwork. Um, now again, with digital art, it can be an NFT, but not all NFTs are digital art. So NFT could be used for, um, geez, just anything really. So if you have a use case to authenticate something, uh, say for ticket sales to a football game or a soccer game or basketball game, you can put that and create it as an NFT <clears throat> and say, hey, this is the only owner of this NFT. It cannot be stolen, it cannot be sold, it cannot be used for anything else but that. Unless you put in a smart contract, then you can, you know, go from there um, but other than just having that ownership other than authenticating it saying this is the real live ticket for this nft you can't go no further than that so if you are looking to invest into nfts just remember don't just look for some digital artwork um, don't go to there's a couple of websites like OpenSea, um, rareable um, nifty gateway those um, are marketplaces in which you can purchase some nfts um, just keep in mind when you're doing that, there's a thing called gas fees, which we can probably get into uh, in another episode in which you would have to um, purchase some gas basically uh, in order to mint the NFT, in order to purchase the NFT, um, whichever the NFT is, not just digital art, just whatever you're actually purchasing. So it could be uh, digital land um, that can be an NFT. It could be a digital asset that can be used in a video game that's an NFT. Um, remember just the NFT is just the certificate saying that you own it uh, and then whatever's in the smart contract smart contract being just the guidelines of what happens with that nft so if xyz happens then abc has to happen also so if nft gets sold so and so gets a royalty or if the digital artwork gets i don't know stolen or whatever then <laughs> something else happens so a smart contract is just the guidelines on what happens with the nft and the nft is just the certificate saying that hey it's the one and only and I own it. So again, I hope I was able to wrap your heads around what NFTs are pretty well. Um, again, I find that a lot of people are just calling, you know, all of these digital art pieces, NFTs and 
Um, they're telling people to invest in them when you know you really don't have to invest in them in order to um, get into the NFT space. You can invest in a bunch of other things that are considered to be NFTs. Um, the artwork has just been the biggest one that's been pushing so far. Um, and if you're going to invest in those, you know, digital artworks, make sure it is with um, someone that you trust. I won't say someone that you trust, but a project that you trust, I should say. Um, reason being is that a lot of these uh, NFTs that are coming out that are becoming uh, digital artwork, um, they are ran by good people um, that just don't have a vision for it. Uh, so if you see one that is like, you know, 10,000 pieces of digital artwork, um, those are actually be computer generated using, you know, AI technology and stuff like that. And you owning them will mean uh, that you basically buy into the community. Um, you don't exactly have to go into it inside of those projects. There are a bunch of different um, individual artists out there who make uh, digital artwork and they sell it as an NFT, um, which is perfectly fine. They're probably just the one and only one instead of just a computer generated, you know, one of 10,000. Uh, well, I shouldn't say one of 10,000. Each one individual one is its own one. There's no other one out there like it, um, but they are a part of a group. So like think of the Board 8 Yacht Club. Board 8 Yacht Club has like 10,000, I don't know how many exactly, but about 10,000 um, uh, Board 8s you know, digital art pieces that are out there. And once you buy into those, you actually get into the Board 8 Yacht Club where they do, I don't know, they have parties, they have meetings, they have a whole bunch of stuff that happen within it, but you have to own that, you know, NFT of that digital art in order to gain access to all of that, um, all of those benefits and stuff like that. So if you are thinking about getting to the NFT space, uh, I hope this was able to open your eyes a little bit about it so that you don't have to go out there trying to spend $500,000 <laughs> on you know, a piece of digital art um, that you may or may not even like. Uh, or if you were thinking about you know, creating your own NFT, it doesn't have to be you know, 10,000 of them. You can have just one piece um, that you can turn into a piece of digital art that you painted yourself. You can turn into a digital art, create that NFT for it and sell it and it just be the only one. Um, that's completely possible, completely doable. And so, yeah, uh, if you're interested in learning more, please give me a shout out on all social media handles, um, Junior Evenso, Junior underscore Evenso on pretty much all channels, Instagram, Clubhouse, um, shoot, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, every single one is all the same. Um, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.